Dear gentle reader, we are gathered here today because we want to discuss um, Bridgerton season three. So I'm just going to put in my thoughts as best as I can as I do this review. I'm not really sure if it's going to be a review, if whatever it's going to unfold to become. Here it goes. So the se- the episode opens up with... Oh, sorry about that. I have a I have a wee baby in the background who's sleeping and is not feeling quite well so fingers crossed this goes well and um i'll be keeping an eye out for the baby okay back to bridgeton so the feathering tons are back in london as is everybody um they're back in london from the country and you know it opens up with uh lady featherington just being so free and um happy because her fortunes have been restored after um season two and what happened in the finale so she's in her element she's feeling good that she is in control of her financial situation and she is doing well and she's thriving as is her daughter Penelope and who is back on her writing um, game. She's still Lady Whistledown and she has been mentioning ladies in her papers and um, for me what I thought is that it was a good thing that she gave the, the ladies her I mean her props but I did think that a lot of the ladies did have some similarities to her in that um i'll speak honestly that they were just not really diamonds if you if you understand if you know my meaning i mean she focused more on their accomplishments and not necessarily their appearances as i personally think the queen usually chooses Um, the diamond of the season Um, so that was an interesting find for me Uh, and then so we see another person who is about to be out oh and I also wanted to mention that the episode is titled out of the shadows so we'll see what that the meaning of that title was so Francia uh Francesca, who is also a Bridgerton, is out in society. She's about to debut and she is about to be viewed by the queen. But then, like, you can see that um, as they're waiting for her to get ready and they're behind her door and struggling, wondering why she's taking forever, they actually realize that... um, there's somebody who's playing the piano downstairs and it actually ends up being Francesca and she's playing Mozart's uh, piece, The Funeral March, which to me also, I was like, okay, is she playing this? Like, because she's terrified or she is dreading this whole coming out um, in society and she's transferring her feelings even though she can't verbalize them properly she's actually transferring or like you know how you write in a journal maybe i feel like that's the connection that francesca has with her piano colin bridgerton comes back into town from his travels we know from last season he said um, in the finale that he was going to go he was about to leave for Europe and we see he's come back and he's completely different. I know this Bridgerton series was set in the 1800s, but um, he comes back looking rugged. So whatever version of being rugged in the 1800s there is, that's how he's come back. And all the ladies are so like into that whole new look. And even his family is surprised by 
the change in his physical appearance and then um they're able to make it to the viewing of the queen whatever it's formally called i'll call it in the viewing of the queen and she seems bored disinterested by a lot of the ladies that lady whistled down herself wrote about and um so francesca who i think is absolutely stunning um catches the queen's interest just for a split second and then she's like yeah yeah whatever So after um, the the viewing of the queen, we find that um, the the Featherington girls are all married. Prudence is married as well, and so even though they're not married to high ranking men or titled men, I do think that their new husbands are completely smitten with them. And oddly enough, I like that for them. So the story that the mother has cooked up is that their wealth has been restored because of the passing of their relative, Aunt Petunia, and um, and that Aunt Petunia has left an inheritance for them. And Vali, privately, is like, is cautioning her or like, pulls her to the side and is like listen i don't know how well this story will hold up because the truth is bound to come out one way or another and what i like about these two women is they're 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 companions in a way to each other because it's not just like a a boss or an employer employee situation she actually Vali acts as the counsel to lady featherington which i do like and really lady featherington has no choice but to keep up the lie and we'll see later on during the season where this takes them then we move on back to after the viewing of the debutantes. They're just wandering in the Queen's Gardens. The Queen is disinterested. She's nowhere to be found. And um, then we see Collins is just out there spitting game, flirting with the girls, you know, who have taken notice of his new rugged looks. And yeah, he's just enjoying himself. Then a plot twist here is, of course, we find out that Cressida and Eloise are friends. Yikes. And Cressida is always nasty to Penelope. And she's so she 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 stumbles upon Penelope and she's as usual mean to her, making fun of her, what she's wearing. And then we get a look at Francesca who's talking to the other debutantes and they're kind of chit-chatting about the kind of man that they would like to marry. And, you know, Francesca is quite shy and she's very, very modest and conservative, which is very surprising given her looks. She's not stuck up or arrogant. And she just says she, she wants a person who is kind. Like, she's not looking for two many things in a suitor she what matters to her is how the person treats her which i found very endearing and then we see um catania kate sharma with lady Bridget, bridgerton and they're talking and discussing how um lady bridgerton really knows her children really well and then anyways, they go into this whole speech about like, you know, how Lady Bridgeta needs to move out of the house. And Katani's Kate is just like, no, you don't need to move because culturally in India, where we're from, sometimes the mom takes her time in the house long after they're married. Um, so there's no rush for her to move. I love this relationship. It's very positive. It's not toxic at all. So while they're in the gardens you see we meet Cressida's parents and we see them talking to the Featheringtons minus Penelope and as you can see Cressida I think she gets her nastiness from her mother because like as they're recounting the story of cousin Jack 
the mother is like oh whoever the new lord featherington will be hopefully he won't be like a con artist hopefully that doesn't run in the family and that's like you know a subliminal message she's trying to cut her you know politely without anyways it's a you know throw your throw a rock hide your hands type of situation and so lady featherington has to cook up a story about how you know cousin jack uh, had a proviso where he stated that you know the girls don't need to worry about the financial situation as long as someone or someone produces a male heir and the daughters can have the estate as long as they produce a male heir what i like about lady featherington is that she's oh my gosh she's a super schema and she thinks quickly on her feet i couldn't do that honestly and then they rush quickly out of the gardens and i think due to embarrassment or whatever it is she urges her daughters to hurry up so that they can get this whole ball rolling rolling on the plot so so yeah that's what happens and then she's like you hear the girls fighting about who's going to inherit what and that's when like everyone is kind of like looking down on penelope and being like listen i don't even know why you're part of this conversation because for you to have an heir you'd need to get a husband so she's now in her third season out in society and she still hasn't gotten someone and she's just like tossing and turning in bed when she gets home she's very troubled by the thought of her being ruled by one of her sisters either the cruel one or the silly one like the stupid one but she let's say simple in her own words so she decides to take matters in her own hands and changing the situation and one of the ways she knows she can change the situation is by changing her appearance and how she presents herself so she and let me back up with her choice of how she's going to change her wardrobe it's inspired by colin and she wants to dress like how people in paris dress and um she says that that's how she wants to dress because um that's how paris is where collins went and i think she low-key subliminally she wants to attract colin but then because of how things ended up la- at the end of last season, she knows that he doesn't desire her that way. But then she's just like, okay, whoever I'm going to attract, I'm just going to attract them. But then I'm going to Loki use the things that I know attract Collins because of the things he might have seen in Paris. Anyways... I forgot to mention the fact that they had a a brief chit chat in the garden and it was about how Cressida and Eloise were friends and how things had changed and she still hasn't confronted him about the things she overheard but she's clearly hurt when she's talking to him and she just excuses herself you know from the conversation because I don't think she's quite ready to talk to him about it. And I don't think she's over it yet. There's a ball coming up. Um, I think Lady Danbury is the one who's throwing it. And it's the Four Seasons ball. So everyone, of course, the women are rushing to the modiste to get their new outfits for the ball, right? And before they go to the Moody's, there's this lovely scene at the Bridgerton house where everyone is gathered around, I think, the drawing room or the sitting room or the living room, whatever it's called. And they're gathered there because Colin has been, is is giving them, is gifting the family things that he has got um, he bought for them in his travels and we see that he's traveled extensively because he's given francesca music um sheet that's in italian 
He's gifted um, Hyacinth Saint Perfume, I think from Paris. He's gifted the um, Benedict Cards from Spain. He's gifted Gregory uh, Bows and Arrows. And he's gifted, I couldn't quite make exactly what it was, but Anthony is holding some form of marble, like ball that looks like a paperweight in his hand. And then he's gifted his mother, um, I think, uh, a locket watch. I don't know what you call them, but like, you know, those circular, I really need to find what it is, but it's it's a vintage watch. I shall say that. And then um, he also gifted Eloise a book and the book is like a book that's about women rights a anyways it's something he knows that Eloise is passionate about and I think all the other gifts that he gave his siblings were very thoughtful gifts and I thought that that was a different side of Colin we haven't seen someone who's I know the Bridgetons are caring, but this level, it, it shows that he knows what his siblings like and he cares to give them things that make them happy. So I really like that. And I also enjoyed the conversation he had with Eloise when he was trying to show, okay, I know this is what you're into. Here's a book. She was just like, no, I'm actually reading a book. It's called Emma. And he was like, you're reading a novel on a silly romance. And she's like, okay, well, what I like about the book is that it talks about humor, friendship, and like painful friendship. It's more real about the things that happen in everyday life than trying to read about books about women who are trying to make their way out of society and gain something from them she's like those are the romances so she's saying like something that's a romantic notion to her is something that she can't achieve so what she's really in love with is freedom and then um she, so he also asks her about like you know penelope and her friendship with her newfound friendship with Cressida and then she's like okay you know Cressida she was kind to me when no one else was kind to me out in the country and me and Penelope we just drifted apart because when Lady Whistledown wrote about me last season it nearly ruined me and everyone kind of kept their distance so I don't want to continue like being shamed I'd rather just stick to my lane and stick with people who stick with me so that's the reason that she gave about Cressida and I remember in my previous video I, I was debating about their friendship and I think we got our answer in this conversation and so things that I've noticed that have Eloise has changed her choice in what material she consumes her taste in her dress in her dressing and her taste in her friendship so then um at well there at the modiste um louise bumps into what's her name penelope and you know they have this awkward first conversation where penelope thinks okay first she 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 expresses to Eloise that she's glad that she bumped into her and that she was you know really she really missed her and she was hoping for that opportunity to come and Eloise counters that with like you know just stop it because you hid yourself from me all season uh, so I don't really believe you and then she's like did you really hide because of what happened between us or because you were afraid that my uh, the secret would sp slip out and she's just like i didn't mean for things to go down the way that they did and thank you for keeping my secret and then she confronts her about her friendship with cressida to which eloise is just like listen you know you just i wish you the very best so she snubs her and then 
the next scene moves on to the Bridgerton boys being at Mondrich's um, gentleman's club. They're having drinks, they're talking. Anthony is thanking Benedict for handling matters of the estate. And, you know, Benedict is like, you know, it gave me a sense of purpose. And now that you're back, like, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. And that's something that I was just like, mm, I never actually thought about it. Like these boys struggle with like purpose and identity. Like they have so much wealth and stability. But then these two concepts seem to be things that they struggle with. More so Benedict than anybody else. But you do see Colin uh, struggling with what his purpose is. Whereas like, Anthony seems to know what his purpose is, which is to be the leader of the family. So I want to put a disclaimer that I haven't really read the book. So I'm sure the the book gets into it more, but that's what I captured from the scene. So as they're speaking with Mondrich, who seems to be happy because his business is thriving, um, they're interrupted by an esquire known as Mr. Somebody Dundas who is informing them that um, a relative of Mrs. Mondrich has died, Lady Kent. She was a wealthy, I want to say spinster or childless woman and she has it, she has um, given all her title and her wealth to their son who is the only male heir in amongst her relatives so their son has inherited the title of lord kent and so it has catapulted now their status now they are part of the ton the ton you know so that was exciting to see i want to see how it's going to change their behavior and their moves because they seem to be lower than like a lower class than the main people of the town. I love Anthony and Katani's relationship. They're still smitten with each other even after coming back from their honeymoon. But there's like an odd scene because like they're sharing the house with other people while they're trying to get like, you know, intimate with each other. But they're back to real life. I don't think they're they're ready to be back to real life because once like you're in your honeymoon you're in this bubble you're in this phase that you want to be with your you know your wife or your husband and to be in this space of like physical intimacy all the time so i love that for them and then the next scene is going to roll into where they go into they're going to go to the ball and Penelope looks stunning. Let's just have a moment. Let's take a moment to appreciate this dress because, I mean, she did it. I don't know. She was a showstopper in that dress. The dress, you know, there's this thing of like, don't let the dress wear you. You wear the dress. And for some people, the dress wears them. But this one, she wore that dress. And Everyone stopped and stared at her. And I think that was an unusual feeling for her because she's used to being the wallflower or as Eloise so cruelly put it, the insipid wallflower at these social gatherings. Anyways, it grabs at the attention of so many people who are there and you, you find gentlemen taking like, you know, note of how she's dressed Meanwhile, you see um, Eloise gathered around like the ladies and all that they're talking about is like embroidery, things that are clearly disinterest her. And she is bored by that conversation. And she wants to actually talk about something else. But in doing so, she tastelessly offends I don't want to say tastelessly because she tastelessly and in, unintentionally offends the other women. So that's what I think Eloise needs to work on. She needs to work on accepting other people as much as she wants to be accepted for how different they are. Um, 
and you can see yeah then as the tone as they're talking and all that jazz we're seeing uh, Penelope really struggling so as much as she looks so beautiful with her new hair and her new clothes and her new attitude she doesn't really know how to engage with gentlemen and flirt and just be easy breezy and that's another thing that I I want to read in the book to see like are the girls actually taught how to flirt or not my assumption is no they aren't it's just like okay when you reach your age it's like okay you guys get thrown in there find a way to talk find a way to mingle and all that which i didn't think was quite fair to be honest and yeah then we see the queen and lady danbury looking at the debutantes and all the ladies and trying to figure out like hey who's going to be like you know the diamond of the season and stuff like that and you can see the queen really isn't interested in naming a diamond of the season so francesca as i said clearly a stunning girl she has caught the attention of some gentlemen and they are hounding her on like oh what do you what are your desires what do you despise what are your hobbies and she's just like i just like to play the piano isn't 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 that enough of an answer and she's like okay i gotta get out of here because all of y'all are crazy i don't know how to answer this question because i already answered this question i like to play the piano so you can see like these engagements, it's like the conversations don't come naturally, organically. They feel very forced and they can be quite stressing. So she just pretends that her brother needs her and she's like, yeah, I need a mental break. I need to check out. You know, side note, that meme of like introverts when they're outside versus introverts <laughs> when they're inside. Yeah, that that has Francesca written all over it, you know. Anyways, then we see Katani again with Lady Bridgerton and they're just talking and Anthony cuts in. He's just like, oh, I'm a beautiful woman. I need to I need to dance with you. You're so beautiful. Da, da, da. He's always like complimenting her and he seems to just be completely in love with her and i like that it's fresh that match was real because it's like you know sometimes when you have these electrifying initial encounters and it's just so hot and then it gets cold so quickly their fire doesn't seem to have sizzled and let me i mean their fire doesn't seem to have like burnt out i love her dress whoever were the costume designers for this whole show did their job man they put their foot in it and they did not release it i love her dress absolutely i love it i don't know who selects more pen no without question i liked kathani's more but a uh, penelope was a close second uh so after she takes her time out francesca finds her way over to penelope and they're having this really delightful conversation about how you know this isn't their jam they're struggling to be in this environment she doesn't um francesca opens up to penelope telling her how she doesn't enjoy being the center of attention and she would much rather just you know hang back and she's not like her her siblings and she feels very different to them but even in feeling different to them she acknowledges that they're very kind and that she's very glad to be she's very glad and lucky to be a part of them because they are kind and they're a beautiful family to her and that is the difference that penelope points out between her family and the bridgertons because her family she she she's not lucky to have that with her family and then somebody whisks her away asks her to francesca that is to dance and francesca encourages penelope to you know just go out and dance so she moves on because she doesn't have 
anybody to dance with she doesn't want to be standing around there awkwardly after she bombed with the two suitors and stuff like that so she moves over to a different spot and while she's walking you can see like the other lady is just looking their noses down at her like ugh like poor you pity like pitifully but not like in a sympathetic way they're just looking down on her and then she just decides to head over to the dessert table and kind of eat her emotions so she's she just hastily eats into ice cream and then she gets um a head a what brain freeze and there she meets lord Depling, who steps up and is very bold and is like yo like are you is everything all right over here and she's like yeah yeah no no i just have like you know i just have brain freeze and you know i'm just going through it this night and she's just like okay so you're going through it i see that lady is looking at you badly she's staring you down what's that what's that about and she's like whatever it's it has always been like this this is how it is and she's like i i think you also have that power to like look at somebody and stare them down like completely and she's just like um are you trying to say like i have that power and influence just from looking at me and so like he's caught her off guard and she's just fumbling and stumbling over her words but in a very cute way because this guy has just been very direct and bold with her and like let her know like yo i think loki you're a hardy like without being too direct you're a hardy and she's just like whoa nobody has ever said that to me anyways and of course here comes miss cressida cowper just unable to let penelope have a good moment she is like intimidated jealous whatever it is whatever deep-rooted psychological thing she has going on with penelope she decides to like interrupt that conversation and embarrass her by stepping on her gown causing it to rip and embarrassing penelope in front of lord depling who is such a gent and is like okay never mind that accidents happen let me go get somebody who can attend to you and mend your dress and he goes off and Cressida of course so pretentious like oh my gosh that is so how kind of you yeah and Penelope is completely mortified she runs out of the ball trying her hardest not to cry but she's so sad and then um Colin notices her leaving like abruptly and seeming so distraught and he's like to the other guys like yo does is everything okay with Penelope and the guys are like why do you even care never mind about that tell us about like your travels everything that you did like you know give us the give us the tea give us the gist now gist us about what used to happen like late nights like because it's like scandalous it's, it's intriguing and he has all these tales and he seems to be like a different person and they say they like him much more now so yet again that's another clue that colin has been struggling with his identity even in society and so he goes he excuses himself quits that conversation and it's like yo i'm gonna check on home girl so i love that about him he's such a gentleman and you know he's like oh is everything okay with you like what happened and then he's like, you look so beautiful in that dress. And she's like, you know what? Cut the cut the baloney. Cut the baloney. I heard what you said. Like you I heard you tell your boys that you would never ever court me. So just stop pretending. And he's just like, you know what? He's surprised he didn't think that she'd heard that. And he's like, listen. I can't let you. I'm so like, you know, like, yes, I said that. I didn't mean to say that. Like Sorry, I'm just clicking something because I want to get my facts right. And then he's like, yeah, I missed you, you know, how are you and all that stuff. And then she confronts him. She's just like, "Mm -mm, I'm not trying to hear that. 
and he's like he feels like ashamed for having said that but at the same time he's just like yo let's talk about this can we talk about this privately and then she's like nope you embarrass me and is it no sorry no is it because i embarrass you and um that's why you don't want us to talk here and she's like no i'm going to i'm going to talk to you right here and she confronts him and she's like yep you wouldn't court me i don't even know how anybody could court me because even when i change up everything there is to change up about myself no one is even interested in me i'm the laughing stock and people still want to embarrass me and then she's like yep i never thought that you would also be a part of those people who like are cruel to me and make fun of me and then she hurries off to her courage her carriage and she's just like she's actually not supposed to do that by herself like um because it would seem um scandalous if she left by herself but she goes home anyways and she decides to write down something in La- lady whistle down we don't know what it is the next morning lady featherington penelope's mama is visited by that same esquire dundas and then she she's confronted in a underhanded way about how she found her you know how she got her wealth status back her wealthy status back and then he's like yeah it seems like i've gotten like a document that seems to be forged and it's it just doesn't seem right and if i find out that that document has been forged i'll have to transfer your estate to another family and that's going to be really hard for me and it's going to be hard for you making that transition and it's also going to be hard for that other family also and it's going to take some time but um yeah luckily we come to find that that document is uh, legit and that your daughters will have produced an heir because if it's not it's going to be very sad to see this beautiful home of yours transferred to someone else and that was so rude i was like how dare you come into my home okay me in my head as lady featherington how dare you come into my home and and talk like this to me threaten me get out anyways so now she has to hope and pray that her daughters get pregnant and that they do that in a short amount of time and that he finds out that the document isn't forged but we'll find out how that story goes the next day Cressida and Eloise are strolling about i don't know if this is one of their famous promenades and Eloise is not pleased at all with Cressida and i think i need to back up because when back to the four seasons ball after Cressida had torn um Penelope's dress Penelope Eloise saw that whole thing go down and she looked at Penelope I mean Penelope looked at Eloise and was like mm, like this is who you're friends with this is really who you're friends with and then she ran off and Penelope I mean Eloise was like oh Penelope I'm really sorry but like but then it was too late okay back to the promenade they're walking and they're talking about how the ball was and you know how she has no competition except with Francesca and for some reason she mentions Penelope and hey I sure showed her and Eloise confronts her and is like listen what you did was completely unnecessary and cruel why would you do that and then Cressida is like you know it's just this whole marriage thing this coming out this need to find a husband it kind of forces you like society forces you to or society pits women against each other so you kind of have to do what you need to do no matter how cr- underhanded and cruel it might be but it's wrong it doesn't really encourage um, women to be friends with each other and yeah i'm i'm so like you know i 
she kind of expresses that she is aware of how cruel she is like on a on an occasion or two and Eloise is like listen it's more than that it's multiple times and she's like listen you're right I don't need to be like that I I can change my ways da, da, da. I should change my ways and then she also opens up to Eloise and says like you know I did try to be your friend once you came last season when you come when when you came out into society but then you weren't like interested in it she talks about how she used to have friends before she came out of she came out to society but then after that all her friends fell away so this whole thing about like looking for a husband is costly to the women but luckily this new friendship has Cause, um, caused them to have the companionship that I feel that they both crave. Ah, <sighs> then we move on to, of course, Katani and Anthony and how they're still in love. And you know, Kate is talking about how she really, really likes being, having found this freedom to love, and she, she feels like. There's this burden that's been removed from her shoulders because she's been the head of her household for so long and she's carried this heavy burden and now she feels like she can take the weight of her shoulders now that everyone is settled down and she doesn't think that, you know, Lady Bridgerton, Anthony's mama, should move. She feels like... Uh, she should let her mama take charge continue taking charge of things in the house and they can just be in this blissful bubble that they're in because they have the rest of their lives to be viscount and viscountess then after that i mean anthony agrees to that and is like let us not speak of mama anymore and then he takes her and then he makes sweet sweet love to her we assume um in another part of the house um lady bridgerton is talking to francesca asking her about how the ball was and she's just like oh it was okay blah 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 and then she's like oh you're not excited like you know it's an exciting time of your life and when you meet the person that you're into this is how it should be and you know and the daughter is just like listen However it'll be is however it'll be. And not every story is going to be like you or dad or, you know, my sis, my siblings, how they fell in love. And I'm cool with that. And then the mom is like, she backs off. What I love about Lady Bridgerton is that she loves love. Oh, I'm here for it. I love love too. And she wants all her children to experience that type of love. And she encourages it also as well. And it's like, it's a pity that they never got to witness the love that she shared with the late Lord Bridgerton. That would have been amazing to see. So you can see the family struggles there. Speaking of people struggling, Colin calls on, not really calls on her like to court her, but he calls on her to visit her and he apologizes for apologizes for everything that went down he compliments her and like you know he's like listen basically long story short you're the best person that i know you're kind you're warm and you make me see the world in a different way you open up the world to me and you make me feel like you see me you acknowledge me and you encourage me to kind of be better to be more ambitious and thirsty for life because he seems to have this sense of hopeless, not really hopelessness, but then seeking his identity and finding what his purpose is. And he doesn't know really how to do that, but Penelope inspires him. And then she's just like, oh, well, <sighs> that's great, but all is well, all is forgiven. And then she opens to him how she struggles with seeing him coming back in town because everything is so easy for him and she wishes 
it could be easy for her because she's been out in society for three seasons she hasn't found a husband yet and he's like listen i can help you i've traveled around the world i can teach you how to like find a husband and then they strike a deal and he's like yep i'll give you private lessons and i'll show you how you can find a husband they shake on it he leaves she's basking in this moment of like hope that this can happen for me and then when she does that she realizes that oh oh she overhears someone in the street talking about whistle down and then she runs back into the house to see what has been printed and then that's where we her sisters tell her okay something has been written about your precious Cullen Bridgerton and then what we where the scene where we find out what has been written is at the Bridgerton house Eloise has a copy of Lady Whistledown and then he, you know she begrudgingly gives it to him to read and what has been written is like you know okay people are trying to be new they're acting all brand new and the person who's acting all brand new it is um Colin so is this all an act does he even really know who he is like so she calls him out basically she exposes what I think is his biggest fear so the entire town knows that and it's embarrassing and he's just like he walks away and Eloise is checking up on him like hey are you okay and he's like "Mm, I don't He's like, I don't care what she writes about me. But, you know, she tried to ruin you last season. I won't forgive her for that. And what she's written written about me, like, you know, she's coming for me. So when I find her, when she's exposed, like, I'm going to ruin her life. And, okay, Eloise is like, hey, do you know who she is? And he's like, "Mm -mm." but when I find out, best believe it's not gonna be nice not gonna be pretty it's going down so that's how it ends this has been long-winded not as long as i thought it would be but i will refine it along the way if you made it to the end thank you so much stay tuned in i will continue the other episodes and the other parts as best as i can Whew. That's it for today, folks. See you on the next one.